In this video, I'm going to take a look at how to find equilibrium and efficient traffic volume. And we'll go through a couple of examples uh, just to make this, uh, these sorts of questions clear. Uh, and we'll start with question three from the review and discussion questions in lesson eight. And then I'm going to make up a question and I'll work through that. And hopefully by doing a couple of examples, uh, the concept will become clear. So let's start with question three from the review and discussion questions. Uh, so let's look at the information we're given. Uh, we're told that demand for travel along a particular road is given by V. So that's a quantity of travel that's demanded. And it equals 16 minus P. And all this says is that demand for travel uh, starts at 16 and then decreases as the price of that travel increases, right? So if P goes up, then V will fall. And we're also told that the private cost of travel is equal to 4 plus V. So it's equal to some fixed cost. That probably represents the cost of gasoline, the cost of car maintenance, insurance, that sort of thing. And then um, some variable cost that depends on the number of other cars that are on the road. And then finally, we have external cost which is equal to V. So this is the cost that each individual driver imposes on others when he joins the road. All right. So the first thing we're asked to find out is, uh, Bardet says, find an expression for the marginal cost of travel. So we want to find marginal cost of travel. And that just equals the sum of the two costs that we've talked about already. It equals the private cost plus the external cost. And so in that case, that's going to equal 4 plus V plus V. So 4 plus 3V. Okay. Now let's graph the information that we have. And I think we'll just sort of be able to naturally answer all the rest of the questions once we start with a graph. So uh, the next question asks us to solve for the equilibrium excuse me, and optimum levels of traffic volume and show that in a diagram. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to put the price on the y-axis just as we always do, and the quantity of travel demanded on the x-axis. And we're going to start with that information that the demand curve is given by V equals 16 minus P. So we know that the demand curve slopes downwards. So it's going to be something that looks like this. and. Uh, we don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but um, or we don't know what the uh, well. Actually, we do know what the slope is going to it's going to be. The slope is going going to be uh, negative one. Uh, but let's so let's uh, focus on what the inter intercepts are going to be just to get started. So the first thing we'll want to find out is what the y-intercept is. I guess we can find out the, what the x-intercept is too, but um, let's just start with this one. And uh, and the way we're going to do that is by finding out what p is equal to when v is equal to 0, right? Because at this point right here, v is equal to 0. And we want to find out what p is equal to when that's true. So let's replace v with 0 here, and then we're left with 16 minus p. And what we can do is move this, we can add p to both sides of this equation so that we get p equals 16. So we know that, that value right there is 16. And then we can do the same here. When we want to find the, uh, the x-intercept, all we 
want to, uh, or all we need to do is find out what the value is for v when p is equal to 0. So given this equation, v equals 16 minus, and we want to set p equal to 0, well, v just equals 16. OK, I'm going to just clear a bit of that away, make some space. OK, now what we want to do is insert the supply curve, what's effectively the supply curve. And there are going to be two of them. And the first one is just going to be represented by our uh, our equation for private cost. So private cost was equal to 4 plus 2v. And then the second one is going to represent the curve uh, for marginal cost. So marginal cost equals 4 plus 3v. All right. So let's graph those. So uh, we need to start somewhere uh, up on the uh, y-axis just to get started. Because by the way, these, these, these two values here are prices. So they correspond to the y-axis right here. So what we want it to do is draw one curve that looks something like that. And we'll say that that corresponds to am I going to write this? We'll say that corresponds to 4 plus 2v. Can I fit that in here? 4 plus 2v. And second one that starts at the same point because, uh, because of the 4. And, uh, and we'll say that this one represents 4. You could change the color here. 4 plus 3b. I might just overlay. There we go. OK. So now all we want to do is find the equilibrium level of traffic. So that's just the traffic volume that will occur if people only consider their private cost of commuting. So that relates to this line here. Uh, so we've got the, um, and we want to essentially find the intersection of this demand curve and what is essentially here a supply curve. And, uh, and that might sound a little strange to, to hear this described as the supply of traffic, but that's, that's actually what it is. Um, and so what we want to do is find the intersection of that point so that we can find out what the equilibrium volume is and equilibrium price is. I'm running just a bit short of time, so I think I'll end the video here and continue in the next video.